Hi, this is The Greatest Story Ever Played. I'm Dan, and today I'm going to be talking about Marie's Room. So, a description for this game is, Marie's Room is a short story exploration game about an unconventional friendship between two classmates. You play as Kelsey, remembering Marie's Room as it was 20 years ago. But something's off. What happened to Marie? So, a little bit of background on this game is uh, it was developed by Like Charlie, and this is their first game, actually, so uh, that's cool. And then also, it's actually free to play on Steam. So, if you go there, you can just play it. Also, the game itself takes less than an hour to play. So, I would recommend um, checking it out if you're interested, uh, as you know. As the recaps go, I will spoil the game, um, but it's it's a pretty quick thing, so if you'd like to um, play, I suggest that. Yeah, I guess with that, I'll get into the recap. The game starts off, um, it's a first person view, and Kelsey uh, is inside Marie's house, and is on the second store, story room, and she can go into Marie's room. You can look at the other doors and some things outside of the room, um, but it won't let you do them. It'll be like, oh, that's her parents' room. We don't need to go in there, or that's the bathroom, or whatever. So you walk inside the room, and the room is fairly cleared out, picked up, um, but you walk over to the bed, and there's a journal on it. So you pick the journal up, and it says, Marie knows that you've been reading her journal, and she's not sure if you can be friends or not, but she'd like to be able to try. Just kind of leaves you a message of like, I, I care about you, but I'm fine. Like, don't you don't have to come after me, but I'm trying to figure stuff out. Then Kelsey uh, talks. So the game is mostly Kelsey giving voiceover to things. Uh, so she, she responds verbally, or in her head, I guess, to the message. Um, and she says, Marie said that she would be all right, but she wasn't. We then get a flashback to Marie's room 20 years ago. This is where 95% of the game is. And you're in her room, and what you do is you look up, look around at various objects in her room, and as you look up, look in, look at objects, the journal gets filled out with little bits of information. And when you pick up an object, Kelsey will share her thoughts on that. Like, um, there's a pair of sparkly shoes, and she picks it up and was like, yeah, when I was with Trevor, he used to buy me so much stuff. Um, I thought it was really awesome at the time. So you'll, you'll get, like, little things like that. The game is you exploring the room and finding all the clues. As you do, the journal gets filled out. The journal is maybe... I don't know, 10-ish pages. Each page uh, could have multiple entries on it. It could have little items as part of it. It could have um, like little clippings or drawings, st stuff like that. Um, I would say it was it's semi-reminiscent of the journals in like the Life is Strange games. It, it's definitely uh, had some influence from there, I would say. So it's kind of like that. Uh, you go through, there, there's a ticket from La La Land. That's one of like the pieces inside there. So stuff like that. Once you complete the journal, this gives you an option to unlock a box, which will bring the story to a conclusion and tell you everything. So I'm going to recap the journal chronologically. So, of course, since you're finding objects around the room, it's not chronological. They're, they're sort of random. You're learning bits and pieces about... Marie and what she was like and her friendship with Kelsey and her life and that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, here's, here's, I guess, their story. So, Marie and Kelsey met at a food pantry that Marie was volunteering at. Um, and so Kelsey had went there because uh, she grew up poor. Her mom was an alcoholic, uh, so she wasn't taking care of Kelsey, wasn't working, anything like that. She said her mom would just be on the couch with gin bottles all around her kind of thing. Like, it sounds like a, a rough scene. And so this sort of sparks Kelsey and Marie's meeting 
uh, more so. They do go to the same school together, um, and Marie uh, wants to befriend Kelsey from here. Uh, Marie uh, gets involved with the food pantry in the first place because she saw a kid at school like steal food and just like shove a sandwich in his mouth, and she she was like wow, if, like, someone at my school could be hungry, like, I should be a part of solving this. I should be a part of the solution here. Uh, which is cool by her, I would say. And Marie, at this point, is excited to be friends with Kelsey. She's, um, glad that she's coming into the food pantry, wants to help out with her. And they ended up being in a class together where they had to work on a group project together. And Marie is also excited about that. Just like, oh man, I could get to be friends with Kelsey. This would be really cool. Um, Kelsey, on the other end, feels uh, a bit of shame about, like, getting uh, help from a classmate, you know, going to the food pantry and then someone you know is the one there. So she feels um, some shame or vulnerability, that kind of thing, which makes a lot of sense. That would be hard uh, for sure. And is, but does, is excited to work on the group project with Marie and just kind of seeing that Marie is a nice person even though kind of our friendship origin story makes me feel pretty weird uh, that you know it would be nice to do this together and so the, it's a science project so they were like oh should we do it on time travel should we Kelsey's very um, like things concrete she's really concrete so she likes Things that are concrete, you know, being able to predict what will happen, things that are straightforward, predictable, that sort of stuff. So her science interest and interest in life are more that way. Whereas Marie is more of the, like, head in the clouds, like, time travel, you know, stuff like that. And so they kind of come to a medium and are like, okay, let's, let's do something that's not too boring, but not too crazy, so to speak. And so they work on their project. That's cool. Oh, the events also take place, I, I should have mentioned this in the beginning, the events take place, I think, roughly a school year. I think that the first journal entry starts in, like, October of the school year, and the last entry is in, like, May of that school year. So that's roughly the time frame uh, that we're working with, with learning, like, their friendship and school year and, you know, how that's all gone. So uh, from here, we find out that Marie's house actually got robbed. And in the robbery, her dad was actually stabbed in the chest during the robbery. He survived, but was really hurt. And Marie herself also uh, was hit in the head with a baseball bat during the robbery. Um, and so, of course, this is a pretty traumatic experience for her and her family, uh, being both robbed and attacked. Big deal. Um, at this time, we also see that the friendship between Marie and Kelsey is starting to break down, that they're having issues. Kelsey um, is a like popular, pretty girl in their school, and Marie, I think, is more of kind of a nerd. And so Kelsey at school will kind of be like, oh, you know, I don't really know you. She'll kind of like put her off a little bit. Um, and Marie also... Uh, doesn't like Kelsey's boyfriend, this guy named Trevor, who's kind of an asshole, and Marie's not about it. She's just like, he's not a good guy, it sucks that she's hanging out with him, and that, yeah, that she treats me differently when he's around or when we're at school versus, like, in our friendship, which makes sense. That would be hard. Uh, this culminates in an event where they hadn't seen each other for a while, and at La La Land, uh, they went, they were both at the movie, at the movie theater to see La La Land separately, and Marie sees Kelsey and runs up and hugs her and says, I'm glad to see you, which Kelsey, like, brushed her off pretty hard and was like, you know, uh, this wasn't specifically what was said, but kind of actually like, what are you doing here, nerd? Like, uh, that kind of thing, which sucks. That would hurt really bad, being Marie, for sure. However, later that night, Kelsey apologizes. She's uh, trying to get a hold of Marie. She's, like, calling her, texting her. Marie's not answering. Uh, Kelsey starts throwing pebbles at Marie's window to try to get her to uh, 
answer she wouldn't so then <laughs> so then kelsey throws a rock through her window and like breaks the glass and that gets them to talk kelsey does get to apologize and she stays the night and starts to stay the night uh more and more from here on um their friendship is getting kind of the reconciliation that's uh that's positive and they they start growing closer Enough so that um, Marie's dad gives Kelsey a house key and is like, you can stay here whenever you need to. Like, you don't have to, you know, it's totally fine. We'd love to have you kind of thing. Uh, Marie also tells Kelsey that she's not stuck. Um, that you can be dealt a new hand. That you're not, you're not stuck here. And uh, you're not defined by, you know, your family or, you know, anything like that. And uh, this was, I think, pretty big for Kelsey, as life has always been hard, so she's kind of has the, like, fuck the world attitude. And so to have someone believe in her and be assured in her was really big. And uh, the opposite was also true. For Marie, uh, she could be pretty uncertain herself, and Kelsey being like, no, you are worthy. There's a part where... Marie refers to herself as not a real person, that she's just a shadow person, that she doesn't really exist. And there's a point where Kelsey says, no, you're not a shadow person. You're real. You matter. It's good kind of seeing their friendship really bond here. After a while, Kelsey ends up breaking up with Trevor because uh, he's a dickhead, um, which is good. That was probably good to see. However, Trevor takes this to be Marie's fault, and he starts to harass Marie. He's, like, calling her at all hours of the night, like, talking shit. Enough so that Marie stops. She turns her phone off at night so she won't get them. Or he'll just send email after email after email to her. Or be threatening in person at school. Uh, one time he attacks Kelsey and, like, dragged her by her shirt kind of thing so like trevor's a bad guy and is being a real dick as time goes he starts to up the harassment there's a journal entry where she where marie says trevor only sent me five emails today only five so you you get this picture that he's real unstable bad person bad guy violent that sort of thing and the authorities aren't really listening. She tries to report it to her school, and the school's like, well, he hasn't really broken any school rules. Would you want to, like, have a conference with us and him? Uh, so, really unhelpful. There's an entry where uh, Marie's cat goes missing. And Marie... It's pretty sure it's Trevor, and also Kelsey is pretty sure it's Trevor, uh, which is super fucked up. People who steal pets are dickheads uh, of the highest order. That's fucking evil. I feel super bad. I felt bad reading that, uh, <laughs> you know, let, let alone like, having to see it or something. Uh, um, you know, yeah, rough. Don't like that. Not cool. Fuck Trevor. This gets to a point where Marie feels pretty out of options and so she ends up buying a gun for protection she's like this guy is unstable i'm pretty sure he stole my cat he's harassing me non-stop he's saying like this is your you know you took kelsey away from me and i'm gonna hurt you for that and like it's it's bad um and this culminates in a big event so marie and kelsey used to sneak into a nearby neighbor's pool like late at night um and they do that and as time went on marie was a little suspicious that someone was watching she would act a little paranoid but kelsey was kind of more of the like let's just have fun kind of attitude um so one night they do go do that um they're having fun and they head home and when they're back at marie's house they start to have a little bit of an argument about like well why didn't we stay longer and marie's like i felt uncomfortable and then during their fight 
uh, Marie just stops and she's staring at the window. Kelsey turns around and sees Trevor climbing in through the window. He comes in and he is blaming Marie for everything. He says, Marie, it's your fault I'm not with Kelsey. You're, you're a bad person. My life was great before you got involved in Kelsey's life. You're a ruiner kind of thing. And then he says, also, how's your dad doing? I'm sure you don't know this, but it was me and Kelsey who broke into your house back then. It was us. And guess what? She's the one who hit you with the baseball bat. Yeah, it was her. Um, so she's not even a good friend. Look, look at this. She's just a thief, just like me. Uh, kind of thing. Kelsey, of course, is like, let me explain. It wasn't like that. Uh, we... I didn't, I didn't hit you because I wanted to. I, I, I just didn't want you to know I was there, which isn't a really good explanation, but I get it. Uh, I didn't want you to know I was there. And when, when I noticed that you were both hurt, uh, I, I called the police. I wanted to wait um, for them to come. Like, I, I didn't want anything that like that to happen. We were just trying to make money uh, real fast. And I wanted to wait for the police, but Trevor actually just drug me by my hair into the van. Like, I, I, I couldn't do anything about it. I'm... I'm so sorry. Um, and Trevor then gets more threatening and goes after Marie. Marie pulls out uh, the gun that she'd purchased and says, don't come any closer. I'm going to have to shoot you. I don't want to, but I will. And uh, Trevor tests his luck and bam, shot in the head, dead. Marie kills Trevor. This, of course, is very tragic for everyone involved. And Marie um, is pretty hurt at this point. Um, she's hurt, obviously, that Kelsey would betray her and have broken into her house and nearly and harmed her and her dad. She's really hurt by that and is really questioning, well, is our friendship real? Was it ever real? Um, you know. What, what, what's, what's the case here? And then also wrestling with the fact that I feel like a murderer. I killed someone. I don't think you should shoot people, but I did. And so she's, she's pretty fucked up on it. And it makes sense. So she decides to go and live with her uncle for a while uh, after this. And I, I think that's probably a good call. Just to be able to get away and, you know, try to figure stuff out. So she does this. Um, the story then flips back to the present. And you get a phone call from your daughter saying, hurry up. Did you find the journal? Well, let's go. And Kelsey says, yes, I'll, 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 I'll be there. And her daughter says, Aunt Marie's going to start smoking in your car if you don't hurry up. And so we're like, okay, cool. We'll, we'll, we'll get out there fast. So... Nice to see that uh, they're still friends now, uh, years later, that they did reconcile at some point after this crazy event in their life. And that's Marie's room. So moving on to a couple general thoughts. Um, I thought this was a pretty enjoyable walking sim. Uh, it would almost be like a much smaller, much more concrete version of Gone Home. Um, you know, Gone Home, you explored a whole house uh, in mansion and was, I don't know, a couple hour game. This would be if that's confined to one room, one space with a journal aspect. So kind of cool, cool thing there for sure. Um, and it was nice to explore the room and learn the story this way. So, um, what I did is I would go and grab, you know, five, six objects or touch five or six objects, learn the backstory, read the journal a little bit, then go back, find more, do that. And then ultimately at the end, I'd read the whole journal again at the end too get that whole picture. So that, that was nice. I thought this was an enjoyable way to learn the story. I also thought the music was nice in it. It's just kind of like low-key indie music, and I thought that really fit for the game. It sounded nice. It was good. I liked the voice acting in it. I thought that was cool, just having like the um, internal monologue voiceover. Journal looked cool. All of that. So that was pretty nice. Um, 
And uh, last is that I heard about this game actually when it was released uh, on the Life is Strange Reddit subreddit. Um, I think it came out in like 2018. I don't, I don't remember, but it was a few years ago, early on in the podcast, um, because I actually played it back then uh, when it released. But it was such a short game, I wasn't sure if I should have t- should turn it into a podcast episode or not. Um, back then, I was like, it could work, but you know, typically I'm we'd been doing bigger games, and that's what podcast episodes were. However, in the two years since then, uh, as you know, I've done my fair share of shorter games uh, along the way since then, uh, as these kind of solo episodes, so uh, it seemed like it would be fitting. And what reminded me of the game was that Callum uh, sent in a comment on our Ask Us Anything podcast for episode 100 and was like, this would be a cool game to hear your thoughts on. And it kind of light bulbed me, and I was like, I remember that game, and I remembered enjoying it. Um, so I decided to check it back out, and here we are. So kind of cool, uh, just getting a little bit of an origin story for it. But I do think it does fit the like Life is Strange vibes kind of thing that Reddit had pointed out back then. And uh, is a cool little game, for sure. Um, I am interested to see what, uh, like Charlie... Uh, puts together in the future. I thought this was a pretty cool uh, walking sim just getting to explore a room. Um, I don't know if they would stay in the kind of walking sim style, but if they do, I would be interested seeing them explore, do more exploring and journal, journal being filled out kind of thing. Like, I thought that was pretty nice and um, yeah, an enjoyable way to experience this. But uh, yeah, all in all, that is what I've got. So if you'd like to get in contact with us, you could do that a couple ways. You can go to our Twitter, at StoryEverPod. I'm pretty active on there and uh, like to engage, so that would be cool. Uh, our website is TheGreatestStoryEverPlayed.com. You have our backfill of episodes, including Gone Home, is on there. I did that about a year ago, I think. Um, so, yeah, there's some stuff there. If you'd like to support the podcast financially, you could do that by going to Patreon.com slash TheGreatestStoryEverPlayed. There, uh, I've got, we've got a backlog, or not a backlog, um, episodes uh, that are special bonus episodes for being a supporter uh, that go into topical stuff, Um, and donations, a dollar minimum, so if you want to give a dollar to be able to get these, you can see that, that'd be cool, Uh, and uh, we've got episodes like what our backlogs are, what our backlogs are, our favorite Pokemon, stuff like that. It's been fun. If you would like to support the podcast, uh, not financially, that would be cool too. We'd, we'd love that. You could do that, um, you know, just by sharing an episode or rating and reviewing us on iTunes or uh, Podchaser or whatever. That would really help just, you know, getting more people who like the games we all like. <laughs>